Hi, gang. In my recent video on how to access your symbol and brush libraries, I used an embroidery trim brush that I had made. And there has been a request to show you how to make one. So that's what we're going to do in this video. But before we get started, please like and subscribe. Let's get to it. As you can see, I have a bunch of different embroidery brushes that I have made. And to get this effect, it's really very simple. So let's make an embroidery brush. We're gonna start by creating the pattern we're going to use for the embroidery. And I like to do that in just default colors to start. We're going to start with a circle. So grab the ellipse tool. As far as the scale goes, you're gonna use a scale that works with the project that you're doing. I usually put mine on flat, so I make them fairly small. Now we can make the flower petal. We're gonna grab the pen tool and I'm gonna draw my petal. Oop, let me turn off caps lock so we can get the other cursor. I'm going to draw my petal by clicking near the circle. I'm gonna hold my shift key and click and drag out the handles to create a wider end. And then I'm gonna click back where I started to create my petal shape. At this point, you can make it bigger, smaller, rounder, fatter, whatever you like. I'm also gonna change my end caps to round round because I just think it looks better. Now we can rotate the petal around the center of the flower to create the full flower. Click R for rotate, Alt or Option click in the center of the circle. It's going to bring up the panel here where we can type in the angle of rotation. Now I would like to do nine petals here, but I have no idea what the angle should be for nine petals. So we're gonna let Adobe do the math. We're gonna start by typing in the circumference of a circle, which is 360. And then we're going to divide that forward slash by the number of petals we want. In this case, nine. Now you can click copy and then command or control D for duplicate to duplicate the petals all the way around the flower. I'd like to add a couple of leaves. I'm gonna do that by using the ellipse tool. And to turn this into a leaf, we're gonna grab the anchor point tool, shift C, and click on the top anchor point and the bottom anchor point to turn them into corner points and give us a leaf shape. Let's go ahead and rotate that, move it into place, and I would like to make another leaf. So I think I'll just Alt or Option drag out my second leaf. I want to rotate this one into place. So R for rotate. Click on the bottom anchor point of the leaf to make that our rotation point, And then I can just drag it into place. And for my third leaf, I am going to select a leaf and then Alt or Option drag to make a copy. Place it where I want it. And I'm looking at that top anchor point for placement. Click R for rotate. Click on that anchor point to make it our rotation point or a pivot point, and we can rotate that into place. Let's add some colors now. So we'll open up swatches. Let's select these two leaves, make sure we're in fill and not stroke, and give those a color. And we'll do the same for this other leaf. We will choose a color for the flower and for the center of the flower. Now we wanna remove the strokes from these, so we're gonna select everything and we are going to remove the strokes. We'll select stroke and get rid of it. And now we can add the effect that we need in order to get this to look like embroidery. Let's start with the flower. We're gonna select all of the purple petals, but not the yellow. So I'm just gonna hold my shift key and click on the yellow circle to remove it from the selection. In order to make this look like embroidery, we are gonna add an effect called scribble. To find that, we go up to Effect, Stylize, Scribble. When Scribble opens up, it is going to actually open up with the default Scribble that looks like this and is obviously not what we're looking for. So let me show you the adjustments that I make. I start by dropping down in Settings and I change it to Tight, which makes a very big difference. Now, in the case of this, the scribble lines are much too fat for the embroidery and the proportions I'm working. So we need to change that. And that is where stroke width comes in. Instead of one point, type in 0.5. 
And that seems about proportionate to what we're doing. But of course, the lines are too far apart. So we move over to spacing. I generally make my spacing 0.5 larger than the size of my stroke width. So in this case, let's try one and see how that affects the spacing. Better, but maybe not quite tight enough. So let's try instead of one, let's try 0.75. And hopefully that will work a little bit better. The other thing we can experiment with is variation. This varies the spacing between the scribble strokes. And in this case, it's 0.5, and maybe that's a little bit big for this. So I'm gonna try 0.25 and see if that looks better. And that definitely made for a tighter look. So I think we're much closer to what we want. Now, if you want your embroidery to look really loose and kind of hand done, you can also play with path overlap and the variation of the path overlap. If I move the variation, whoop, that was a little too much, you can see it goes over the path or comes inside the path a little bit. Usually, I don't use that. Let's try a really tiny amount of it and see if it enhances our image. So if you want something that looks more machine done, I wouldn't add it. But if you want something a little more hand done looking, a little more crafty, you can go ahead and approach it this way. Those are the main things I change. But of course, experiment and see if there's something that you prefer. We'll click OK. Once we've done one area, we can very easily select others go up to effect, and the scribble we just applied is gonna be at the very top of our list, and we can just apply scribble, and it will apply it. Now there is one other thing you can do, and that is change the direction of the scribble. If there's any pieces that you don't like the way they look, we can easily change the direction. And to do that, we're going to select it, open up the appearance panel, click on scribble, and it's gonna allow us to make a change for just the piece that's selected. We're gonna highlight the angle, and if you use your arrow keys, you can just rotate the angle until you find something that you prefer. Now that these are the way we want them, we are going to expand them so that if we move them, it won't change the look of our embroidery pattern. To do that, we're gonna go up to Object, Expand Appearance, and I'm gonna do the same for the purple, but not that yellow circle, so I'm holding the shift key to unselect it, and we're gonna go object, expand appearance again. Now let's talk about the circle. Instead of having this filled, I'm gonna change this to the stroke, and I'm gonna make the stroke much smaller because one point in this case is too big, and we want it to match the rest of our embroidery. Now, I had changed the other embroidery to 0.5, but in the case of this one, I think we might need to go even smaller. So I'm going to select 0.25 and round, round. Now we can add a different effect. Instead of scribble, we're going to go up to effect, distort and transform, zigzag. And initially this is going to look terrible, but that's okay. We will adjust it. Instead of 10 points, I'm going to use my arrow key to make this much, much smaller. And in this case, I think one point is gonna be the way to go. And we can also adjust ridges per segment and we can make the points either smooth or corner. I prefer smooth. We're gonna go ridges per segment and you can just slide it up until you're happy with the number of ridges per segment. You can also use your arrow keys to adjust this amount. I'm going to alt drag this out of the way because I wanna use it over here, but I don't think it's big enough for the center so I'm gonna hold my Alt and Shift key and just scale this up a bit in order to kind of tie this whole flower together. I'm also going to arrange, bring to front, so it's on top of the purple. And I think it needs one more piece in the center, so I'm going to take this piece, I'm gonna Alt drag, because I still wanna use it for something else, and you know what, let's change the color of this. Let's go to the swatches and do this, and then Take this one, right click, arrange, bring to front, and we're gonna put this one on top, and there's our flower. For this, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, and I guess we'll leave that this color, but let's make a copy of this and drag it down over here, and we'll make this one a different color. Now that we have this, we can create the other half of our pattern. We're going to select the leaves, and we're gonna select these two little flowers. Select O to reflect, Alt or Option click 
in the center of the flower, select vertical and copy. And now we've got our little embroidery pattern that we can make a brush out of. So we're going to select the pattern, open our brushes, click new brush. We're gonna make this a pattern brush, click okay. And there's a couple things to do in this window. Obviously we need to name it and we need to adjust the corners. Now there's a few different options, auto centered, auto in between, auto sliced. My favorite is generally auto sliced and this is the one it gave us as default for the first corner so we're gonna keep it. But there is a second corner that we need to apply something to. It's the inside corner. So we're gonna click on this drop down and select the same thing, auto sliced. And now we can click okay. Let's test out our new little embroidery brush. We'll select a path and apply the brush. Now, if you don't want, um, if you want more spacing between the little elements, we can adjust the brush. We're gonna double click on it, go back into our brushes and change the spacing. Let's try 25%. And that gives us a little breathing space in between each little embroidered flower. Click okay and we'll apply to strokes. So now we have something with a little more breathing space. If you wanna change the scale of your pattern, one option is to adjust the scale in the pattern window. So here is scale and you can change the number. Another option is to change the stroke weight. So instead of one point stroke, which it is at the moment, I can make it a smaller stroke weight and get a more delicate repeat, or I can make it larger and that's an easy way to make these adjustments. What if you want your embroidery to be set on a ribbon for trim? Well, that's another very easy addition. We're gonna switch to the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle around our element. Right click, arrange, and send to back. It's important that this does not have a stroke, but let's get a fill in it first so we can see what we're doing. We'll open the swatches, let's make it Oh, let's give it this blue, except of course, let's do it in fill and not stroke. I do that all the time. And it is important that we remove the stroke from this. Let me move this over. And I'm gonna group this together so we can align everything better. And, ooh, you know what? I like that better. Now let's group this together. Right click, group, or Control Command G. And now we can take this and we're gonna align it, center, center, and now we can turn this into a brush. Now the width of this blue affects the distance between your embroidery. So if you want them closer together, you want to make this smaller. If you want more space in between, you're gonna make this rectangle longer. I'm gonna do something in about that range. Select it, again, we're gonna open our brushes, make a new brush, it's a pattern brush, click OK. We're gonna adjust the corners. And I like auto sliced. Give it a name and click OK. Now let's test this out. We can apply it here. And you can also see how these work when they're applied to shapes. So we can apply to a circle and a rectangle and you can see how this helped the corners. And of course, we can also apply the one without the ribbon. So there you have it. That is the way that I make my embroidery trim brushes. If you learned something new, please give this video a like. And if you're not already subscribed, that might be a great idea to do it now. If there's any other videos that you would like me to do, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to oblige. See you next time.